We marched on that day. Oh, did we march. I wish you could have seen us as he came into the city on that donkey. We marched for life because the Romans only gave us death. My friends had been killed. My children lived in fear because the Romans came and if they felt that we were doing anything wrong, they killed us. They took out their swords and they murdered us. It didn't matter, really, if we did anything wrong. All that mattered was that the Romans tried to keep the peace. And you know the way that they kept the peace? Violence. Murder. That's how Rome kept the peace. The Roman peace. They had a slogan. It was called, Peace Through Strength. It didn't work then. It's never worked in the history of humankind. We had a technical term for it. Bull... Oni, baloney. That's what we called it. We Jews, we Jews, we didn't eat baloney because that stuff's made of pigs, but we could smell it a mile away. And so, so we marched. We marched. We didn't carry signs, but we carried palm leaves. That's what we carried. And you may wonder why palm leaves? What does that have to do with anything? In the ancient world, palm leaves was a sign of victory. It was a sign of strength. Ancient Roman Empire, Egyptian Empire, they would wave palms whenever their leaders would enter into a new city. And so when he came to our city, we marched and we carried palms. And we said, this is the way to peace. This is the way to solve our problems. And so we waved the palms. And you know what else we did? We took off our cloaks. And we laid them before Jesus. He walked in. And we laid our cloaks before them as he rode the donkey. And we did this for a couple of reasons. First, because it was really dirty on that road. And we wanted to keep him clean. But you would never put your cloak down for just anyone. You would put your cloak down in the ancient world for a leader, for a king. And so we chanted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Come and save us from the violence that's all around us. Come and save us from the hatred of the Roman Empire. Come and save us from the religious leaders who were corrupt and who who had us come to the temple and we had to pay a temple tax and they kept the money that we would give them and they gave part of it to Rome. And Rome said to them, you can keep all of this money as long as you keep the peace. It was hard for me not to see them as traitors especially as all of my friends were dying. One year, the Romans came, and they crucified 2,000 of my friends on the road. And you know what they tried to say with that? You mess with Rome, and this is what's going to happen to you. Peace through strength? No. Jesus came riding on that donkey, and he said... Peace I leave with you, but not as the world gives. I leave you peace as I give. And you know what that peace looks like? Sometimes you may find yourself on the other side of the sword. Sometimes you may find yourself up on a cross. 
That's where Palm Sunday is leading, to Good Friday. Sometimes in a world that's hell-bent on violence, you may need to take that violence upon yourself and offer divine love in return. Amen. That's the way that Jesus brings peace. Not as the world gives, but as God gives. You see, I've gone a little ahead of myself with all of this. Ancient Rome had these Caesars. And the Caesars had a theological and a political message that came together. Caesar was called King of Kings. Caesar was called Son of God. Caesar was called the Prince of Peace. The political and the theological came together in the Roman Empire, and it was a theology and a political ideology that led to conquest. Caesar said, I came, I saw, I conquered. Well, congratulations, Caesar. We have the God of the Exodus. And so when we got to Palm Sunday, we were marching for the Passover. 200,000 of us were there for Passover every year, celebrating the God of the Exodus. You see, this is how God works in the world. God heard the cry of the victims of the violent empire in Egypt, and God worked for their freedom. God led them out of slavery in Exodus, and this is what our God looks like. This is the God who hears the cry of the oppressed. This is the God who works against violent empires so that we can work towards love, towards giving towards one another. Jesus said, if you want to be first in the kingdom, be the last. If you want to be first in the kingdom, be the one who serves the other, not the one's who lord it over others. And so when he came in on that donkey, we said, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That's the theological statement. And then we said, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the son of David. David, our greatest king in all of Israel. This is the one who would come and be like David, who would lead us into a greater future. But Jesus always had this way of flipping things upside down. You see, the new son of David would not be like any of the kings of old. David fought his wars to keep the peace. Caesar fought his wars to keep the peace. Jesus said, put your sword back in its place. For all who live by the sword, die by the sword. You could say that about any weapon. Put it back in its place. That's what Jesus said. That's the way towards peace. Because there are two ways to live in this world. One is the way of the Roman Empire. Peace through violence. The other is the way of Jesus. Peace through love. Peace that may cause you to give something up. Jesus says, follow me to the cross. Sometimes that's literal. Sometimes it means you may have to die to your ego. Sometimes it means that you may have to die to being right. And I'll get very personal about this. Sometimes it means that when you're in a fight with your brother, you let it go. Sometimes it means that when you're in a fight with your spouse, you let it go. Sometimes it means that if you're the boss of a company, you let it go. Sometimes it means when you are an employee, 
You let it go. Sometimes it means when you're in church conflicts, you say there's something greater happening. And that something greater may mean that I need to die to winning. And it may mean that I need to live towards a resurrected life that loves all people, including those that we call our enemies. And so this Holy Week, may you come to know the difference between the way of Caesar and the way of Christ. And may you choose the way of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hi, everyone. This is Adam Erickson reminding you that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome at Clackamas United Church of Christ. We are located at 15303 Southeast Webster Road in Milwaukee, Oregon. Our worship service starts at 1030 on Sundays, except for during the summer months, we start at 10 o'clock. If you'd like more information on our church, you can visit our Facebook page or our website at c-ucc.org. You can also reach out to me through email at adam at c-ucc.org. Until next time, grace and peace be with you.